Hey guys, Chris here, world traveler and remote freelancer. This is my experience as a digital nomad in Budapest, Hungary. My first impressions, Budapest is beautiful. We're just coming up to the river now and what can I say, Budapest is beautiful. I'm actually surprised, I wasn't expecting it to be this nice castles along the river and it's greenery, everything is picturesque. Despite the city's pristine beauty, the cost of living here is still great value. Take for example this Airbnb, in which we stayed in, in the heart of the city for two weeks. If that's the price you can get on an Airbnb, imagine what you can get for a rental. As for eating out, I generally spend about seven to eight US dollars for a normal meal, but on the odd occasion, I could spend up to double that. We found that the dessert was cheap and the coffees ranged anywhere from two to four US dollars, uh, the cheapest and most available meal you'll find on the street is Giros, which will cost you anywhere from 500 to 1,000 forints and looks like this. If you like to have a drink on the weekend, you're gonna love Budapest. We hit up this cool bar right on the river for a few drinks and spent less than 30 US dollars in total for a small night out. And to work off that hangover, you can find some affordably priced gyms in the city this was on the lower range at about 320 US dollars per day or get a monthly for $30. For transport, getting around is pretty easy if you stay in the inner city. Most of the places we went to were within walking distance of our Airbnb, but if you do need to use public transport, it's 350 forints for a trip and that's valid on buses, trams and the subway. Now let's talk about co-working. Capta, just behind St. Stephen's Cathedral, is probably the most popular choice. I paid a hefty $12 to use the space for just a half day, but if you're here for more than a few days, monthly memberships are available for $160 US dollars. But as I was only staying for two weeks, I stuck to the cafe scene and found myself some pretty decent speedy Wi-Fi at a place called Fekety. Other spots I checked out included Magvito, which is definitely catered to work and study, Espresso Embassy, which is great for a standing desk, and then Konya and Nine Bar, which weren't the best setup for remote work, but the staff seemed happy for me to work there, so it was pretty good. Finally, once you're done with work, a few activities that I recommend in Budapest is to go on a river cruise of the Danube. This one included a beer and of course, incredible views of the city. And of course, you can't go to Budapest without checking out some of the thermal baths. This one is called Gellert Baths, and while the place was a little bit difficult to figure out, it was a beautiful and relaxing location overall. All right, thanks for watching guys. Overall, Budapest is a very livable city, at least in the summertime that is. I mean, it's not the cheapest place in the world to be a digital nomad, but it definitely is a good value destination. If you're watching this video on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And remember, I publish detailed reports on most destinations I go to, so check out the blog at christafreelancer.com where you'll find my full report on Budapest amongst a range of other cities. All right, hope you like this one. I'll catch you on the next one.